All right, praise Master Jesus, somebody. You are welcome to our Global Miracle Program, which is titled, What Does God Says? As you know, What Does God Says is the title of this program. And don't forget, it's a Global Miracle Program. It's globally, worldwide, wherever you are. The distance is not a barrier. We can always reach you if you follow us. And the... Uh, this program is brought by Emmanuel Moses Media Network Service here in Spain and we are here to bless you, to reach you, to meet your needs. Don't forget wherever you are, you can send us email, you can or call us yeah, in case you have any testimony, any questions, contribution or prayer requests, whatever. By the special grace of God, today we have a particular topic that uh, we will be discussing. Last week we discussed about the mindset of God in marriage. What is the mindset of God in marriage concerning you? And we said God mindset is for your marriage to be holy, your marriage to be prosper, and your marriage to be blessed. By the grace of God today we shall be discussing on who is the right person for you to marry? How do you suppose to know who you are to marry? Who is the mindset of God concerning you, or rather concerning your marriage? And uh, secondly, we're still going to be discussing sex in marriage, what sex is all about in marriage. But before then, I want you to stretch forth your hand and pray with us. Father, in the name of Jesus, mighty Jesus, even as we go on this teaching, let your presence, O oh Lord, be so great in the name of Jesus. Let there be an inspiration, let there be revelation of your word, and let there be a transformation to the glory of your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, you are welcome back. Uh, we shall be discussing on who is the right partner for you to marry, who do you are supposed to to marry, do you just see anybody in the street and decided to marry the person? Or somebody called you, you say, yeah, this is my husband or this is my wife. Or rather, maybe the person is so nice to you, the person is handsome, the person is rich or whatever. Is this the right person for you? What is the mindset of God concerning your partner, choosing your partner? Ladies and gentlemen, I will want to start like this, just as I told you last week that Marriage is a legal union between man and woman as wife. Marriage is a legal union between uh, man and woman as becoming husband and wife. That is marriage. Now, who is that person that's supposed to go into union with you? Don't forget, I also say marriage is companionship. Marriage is friendship. Marriage is relationship for you to marry somebody it means it's a person that is heart your heart and his heart are clipped together because the bible says a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife they too shall become one flesh they alone no god too so who is that person that's supposed to be one with you now i want to first of all start like this i want to show you some case file in the bible starting from uh, in Genesis chapter 6, in Genesis chapter 6 from verse 1, the Bible says, When men began to multiply on earth, there was daughters that were born into men, and the sons of God go into and begin to marry the sons, the daughters of men, under man, sons of God and the daughters of men. They began to marry and they began to uh, multiply and they were having giant as their sons and daughters. And God was displeased. God says the evil of men is wickedness. Why? Because the sons of God are supposed not to marry the daughter of men. Talking about the sons of God and the daughter of men is talking about the people that are serving God and the people that are serving all that God. So there are two different things. It's a two different uh, uh, parallel life that cannot be able to meet together. Now, as we move forward in Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 3 and 4, you're going to see what I am talking about, please. Deuteronomy chapter 7, I want to see verse 4 there. Verse 3 and 4, wherever you are, open your Bible with me. And uh, 
see what God is talking about. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse number 3 and 4. Alright, I read. Neither, this is a commandment of God, neither shall thou make marriage with them, the daughters. Thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto their son. For they will turn away the son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So we the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. Ladies and gentlemen, God has given this instruction that the daughter of men will not marry the sons of God, and the daughters of God will not marry the sons of men. That otherwise they will turn their heart to other God. And don't forget, he says, I am a jealous God, and I will not agree with anybody that will deny me marriage and begin to serve other God. Now, in marriage, for you to choose marriage, that is what we call intermarriage. That is what we call interracial marriage. And there is also what we call mixed marriage. Now, in mixed marriage, anybody can marry anybody he wants. That is what is happening here. And God is warning his children not to miss marriage with anybody, anytime, anywhere, because they may turn your heart. Now, let's quickly see one excuse, or rather see one example about what I am telling you right now because we are in a serious matter. First King chapter 11. First King chapter 11. Don't forget we are teaching and we have to read some Bible. First King chapter 11. King is before Chronicle, I guess. All right. Giving me a little delay. First King chapter eleven. First King chapter number eleven. In First King chapter eleven, from verse one, the Bible says, "But King Solomon loved many strange women." Now, who are the strange women? The strange women are known as the daughters of men. Solomon has so many wives, and Solomon, Solomon was a builder of tomorrow. He goes out. Solomon was good in the early stage. He was fire. He sacrificed. He made a lot of things. And the Bible says he go after strange women. And let's see what happened. But Solomon, but King Solomon, loved many strange women together with the daughters of Pharaoh, women of the Moabite, Amulat, Edomat, Zidonia, and Hatat, verse 2, of the nation concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, ye shall not go into marriage with them, neither shall they come into you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. Turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto this in love. Verse 3 says, And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wife turned away his heart. Now, the heart of Solomon were torn away by the daughters of men, by the straight women. So God has straightened warning us not to miss marriage, not to go into the daughters of men. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask you who are the daughters of men today? The daughters of men are the people that does not know God. Maybe some of their sisters have been juju, maybe some of them are still worshiping adult. There are some that believe in hyperlists and others one. Now, somebody will say, Pastor, I want to marry this person so that I can change him or her. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not easy for you to change somebody except God change somebody. You cannot change somebody. For you to marry, the right person you are to marry are this. First of all, your partner should be someone who believes what you believe. Somebody that believes what you believe. Somebody who has the same faith with you. Somebody 
that serve the same God that you are serving. Because if you marry a lady doctor, it's obviously that lady doctor have to take you to where he's serving. Or rather, it's going to be two power that are fighting in the same home. Two power will be fighting together in the same home. And if you have married a drunk, or rather a drunkard, after he or she might have drunk, he will turn you to a punch and he will begin to blow you. That is going to be a problem. And if you marry somebody who believe in other society, which means all the children you will be born in, they will be using them for rituals. And at the end, you will say, Hadalo. May Hadalo not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. So if lady daughter have to marry lady daughter, go for them, no problem. If Unbeliever to marry unbeliever, no problem, good for them. Maybe with time God may change them. But you that have already believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, you must never go and marry unbeliever because if you don't take time, it may turn your heart out of your faith. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody you have to marry is somebody that is close to you. Now let us look at the case file of Abraham. We understood perfectly that Abraham and Sarah got married and the bible says abraham sarah was abraham uh, sister that's why they were married but he was in sister you know they were intermarried he was a sister now when abraham was about to die in the book of genesis chapter 24 if you have your time you read genesis chapter 24 now abraham called the servant and he said please Go to my old kindred, my old people, my old believing the same faith. Help me and marry a daughter for my son Abraham. In short, he makes his servant to swear. That is to tell you the gravity of the offense of not marrying the same tribe. So he sent him to go to his kindred to go and marry the person that they have the same faith. Now, if you look at the Genesis chapter 26, verse 34, you find out that Esau married from another place. He married a strange woman at the... Bible says Isaac and Rebekah was not pleased with him. Now, when Jacob, in Genesis chapter 28, verse 6, when Jacob was about to marry, they also make it to swear to marry their own person, to marry their own children, to marry from their own time. Now, who are our own children? Or our own children? Who are our own time? I am not telling you about uh, racist. I am not telling you about tribal sentiment. No, 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 no. It doesn't matter whether you are black. It doesn't matter whether you are white. It doesn't matter where you come from. But what important is what is that person believing? Now, Abraham and his wife believe one God. Uh, Isaac and Rebekah believe in one God. Uh, Jacob and his own wife believe in one God. So, when you believe, when they believe in one God, they have everything in common, they have the same faith, they have the same belief. And you find out that they will be blessed in the marriage. But a situation whereby this one is this and the other one and they come together to marry. I tell you there is bound to be conflict in the marriage except they come together and believe in the same thing. Praise Master Jesus somebody. Quickly let us see what Apostle Paul was having in mind concerning this issue. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, 14 to 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 17, 14 to 17. He said, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Don't always come together with unbelievers. For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? What communion had light with darkness? Verse 15. And what concord had Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believed with an infidel? If it is simply me, an unbeliever, why those that believe are the Christians that we are talking about today? Verse 17 says, verse 16, God have said, okay, 16 says, 
And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? That is why I told you, you are the temple of the living God. So you don't have any connection with somebody that is watching the idol or somebody that is serving idol. They are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Verse 17, the last verse says, Wherefore, come out among them and be ye separate. Said the Lord, touch not the unclean things, I will receive you. I will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and daughter. That is verse 18. Somebody will say, Pastor, you don't understand. I am 40 years old woman. So I can marry whoever I want to marry. I want to tell you I understand what you are saying perfectly. But it's better for you not to marry even than to marry somebody who will be using you every day to fight. Or rather, who will be turning your heart out from God. The Bible says, if your right hand will make you to enter a fire, it says, it's better you cut it off. My wish for you is to marry and to marry somebody that will make you stronger in the hand of God. The Bible says the two shall become one. And two is better than one because if one is weak, the other one will rise in up. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter the age you are. Marriage is not a thing you rush into. Marriage is not you marry anybody you see. You must seek the face of God before you marry. And you must marry somebody that have the same faith with you. I'm not talking about tribe, but the same faith with you. Somebody who can make you to stronger in your faith. Because the Bible says, they turned the heart of Solomon against God. And God was not angry. That was, say, that was to say, the end of Solomon was not perfect as the beginning. Why? Because the strength God he married make him or turn his heart out of God. And I will want you to know that every believers are meant to marry believer. Even if you want to change the somebody, change that person before you marry him. Change that person before you marry her. If you marry him, say, after I marry her, I want to change her. You are playing game with your life. And whatever that you see, don't blame God, don't blame your pastor, don't blame anybody. So many people does not even pray before we end, they enter marriage. Is you have this uh, obligation and mandatory that you have to pray before you enter marriage. Don't rush into marriage, please, ladies and gentlemen. Don't marry any person you see anyhow. It's better you remain free and become free than you marry and you become a slave to somebody else and to whatever. So you have to marry from the believers. You have to marry from the household of faith, wherever you are. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is all we have to say now concerning the right partner you are to marry and the person you are to marry and who you are supposed to marry. You don't marry because others are married. You don't marry because you are of age. You marry because God says it's due time for you to marry. By the special grace of God, I will be rounding up and... We don't have time again. Maybe our next topic would be what it says all about in marriage. Is a says a weapon, a tool to sustain marriage. Is a says uh, a compliment in marriage, or it says a duty in marriage. Who shall be discussing that one by the grace of God next week? I want to talk to you one more time. I admonish you that if you have any question, call us, message us. And they get in touch with us wherever you are and we will be glad to answer your question and receive your contribution in the mighty name of jesus before i round up wherever you are i want to pray with you now don't forget if you are about going into marriage with an unbeliever with somebody you don't know be careful find out who that person is so that you will not make mistake you shall not make mistake in jesus name I want to pray for you. I want you to stretch your hand towards uh, the screen, wherever you are, as we decree. Holy Spirit, I call upon you this hour. Your sons and daughters that are believing you for love partner, not just love partner, a rightful love partner. 
that you, O oh God, will open their eyes to see. You, O oh God, will minister to them. You, O oh God, and my Lord, will meet them at the point of their need in the mighty name of Jesus. As many that have made mistakes already in marriage, Father, I am turning that mistake to a step to their sources. Let their mistake that they have made be a stepping stone to their sources. In the mighty name of Jesus, every marriage that is experiencing up and down, I command the stability now. In the mighty name of Jesus, every marriage that is about to collapse, ah, by the reason of the advent of the Holy Spirit, by the power of divinity and the authority in Trinity, I command that marriage to stand still now. In the mighty name of Jesus. The marriage that have been experiencing crisis right now, I command an abundance into that marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. Every power that want to fight against your marriage, I command that power to die and bury for your sake in the name of Jesus. I raise you above captivity. I raise you above power that want to stand against you and your marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You are blessed. We are expecting your call. For a testimony. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be up next week with another episode of this same uh, program, Global Miracle Program, that says, What does God say about your marriage and about other things? Please always stay with us, always follow us as you do. You shall be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.